Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkham Duels, and today we're going to be doing an Evil Sworn deck profile. So this deck is actually insane, and is really actually pretty good in the meta right now, because you can summon all sorts of crazy cards in the deck, and with the meta running around as it is, with Drytron summoning Herald of Ultimateness, and a lot of different decks using really high-level monsters, Evil Sworn Ovion is looking better than ever, which is really exciting, because this deck is really good, and basically locks your opponent out of summoning level 5 or higher monsters, which is super nice. So... Without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and you can come bar notifications, what, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below, where you have all sorts of awesome rewards for you guys, like getting your name, description, every single video, getting a side card suit in the mail, or even getting to request a deck profile every single month for a patron, along with test hands. So, without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So, first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Evil Sworn Kirkion. So, Kirkion is a really weird but cool card, because it has the ability that uh, you can only use each of the following effects of this card once per turn. And while this card is in your grave, graveyard uh or while this card's in your graveyard if this card is sent there this turn you can normal summon an evil sworn monster for one less tribute but basically from here down is the really good effect because it has the ability that you can banish one evil sworn monster or l sworn monster from your graveyard then target one evil sworn monster in your graveyard and add it, that target to your hand and then you gain the following effect to be able to normal summon an additional time so basically if you have two evil sworn monsters in your graveyard you can manage one of the two add the other one back to your hand, and then be able to normal summon the one that you just added, which is pretty good. We did play three copies of Evil Swan Caster. Caster gives you an additional normal summon, which is pretty good to be able to get you an additional normal summon, because basically this is a rank four deck that you're just trying to get two level four monsters on your side of the field to then overlay and go in for a copy of Ophion and any of the other monsters that you particularly need. We then play three copies of Mandragora. Mandragora is really good because if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand, which is really good just to be able to instantly summon it to your side of the field and then use it as an Xyz material. We then play two copies of evil sworn thunderbird thunderbird basically anytime a card is activated then uh it runs away and it banishes itself and then when it comes back it becomes 1950 uh, which is pretty neat we then play three copies of evil sworn heliotrope heliotrope is a normal monster that we play in the deck that can be special summoned by multiple means in the deck to be able to get an additional monster on your side of the field which is super nice and if you guys have ever noticed this about this card this is actually completely backwards the actual text is back backwards where it says eliminate eradicate uh or eliminate eradicate eliminate um which is really cool exterminate which is really cool to be able to just see that and me being dyslexic like oh that that's what that means which is really cool we then play three copies of Ash Blossom to round out the monsters. You just need the three Ash Blossom because this deck is basically the Floodgate deck, which is really cool to be able to just throw a bunch of Floodgates against your opponent and be able to just stop them in their tracks from doing anything against you which is fun to do to me with this deck so uh that's it for the monsters guys let's get into the spells so for the spells we're going to be playing a single copy of double or nothing because you can go in for utopia double to otk your opponent which is really fun to be able to go after utopia double and just you know hit him for ten thousand. uh we then play a single copy of dimensional fisher dimensional fisher banishes any monster that's sent to the graveyard which is really good against tritron i have to say we then play a single copy or two copies of infestation pandemic infestation pandemic protects all your face up evil sworn monsters currently on the field from spells and trap effects which is pretty good in some instances but it's not like there's not that much outside of like facing eldridge that it really hurts so this card is really good against like eldridge we then play two copies of pot of desires because pot of desires is just ridiculously good in this deck to be able to get a copy of caster to your hand or getting a copy of another monster that you hand that you can normal summon out or having a kirkion added that you can then normal summon if you have any of your uh, evil sworn monsters that's in the graveyard it's just not that big of a deal this card is really really good you're not worried about banishing any particular card the only thing i don't like to banish is my copy of double or nothing but i have plenty of cards in the extra deck that i can go into so if i do banish it it's not like it's the end of the world we then play three copies of allure of darkness because it helps you dig into the deck even deeper to get your particular plays off that you need and then we play three copies of Unexpected Die. So as you guys have noticed, I'm not playing Rescue Rabbit this time. So the reason I actually am not playing Rescue Rabbit is because I feel like with Rescue Rabbit, it if you normal summon it out to your side of the field and then you banish it, if you don't have, it, like with Pot of Desires, if you don't have at least two copies of your heliotrope in your deck then you're pretty much in a bad way because 
this heliotrope is good because it's with your copy of rescue rabbit but with unexpected die if you draw an unexpected die you can drop it and basically heliotrope is a cyber dragon from deck which is really good so if i use my copy of my desires and i banish both of these or i banish one and i have one in my hand and i add from deck to hand a copy of unexpected die i still have one left or at least a chance with one left that i can special summon it and then normal summon another monster to my side of the field like a thunderbird in a bad hand situation and be able to go off from there so this card is a lot better to me than playing your copy of rescue rabbit and plus they can ash the copy of rescue rabbit and they can ash this but do you want to waste your normal summon and a card in your hand with rescue rabbit to get ashed or do you just want to get one copy of unexpected die and go one for one against your opponent without wasting your normal summon so i bumped out rescue rabbit and put unexpected die in its place for those reasons so tell me what you guys think of that down in the description or down in the comments down below so that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. So for the traps, we're going to be playing three copies of Infinite Impermanence because it's a good hand trap to be able to stop our opponent from all sorts of different shenanigans against us. We play a single copy of Infestation Infection. Infestation Infection is a really good card because once per turn, you can shuffle any of your uh, Evil Swarm monsters from your hand or face them from your field, side of the field into the main deck, and then you get to add any of your Elsworn monsters from your deck to your hand. So you can basically tag them out which is kind of neat to be able to tag out an elsewhere monster like shuffle back an ophion from your side of the or not ophion but shuffle back something like a copy of um i don't know like caster back into the deck that you've already normal summoned with and then add a copy of kirky on because you have two in the graveyard that you want to get back you can use it that way to be able to get additional monsters to your hand that you can then you reuse effects we then play a single copy of uh, macrocosmos macrocosmos is really good because you can activate this card to be able to while this card's on your field any monster sent to the graveyard is removed from play instead which is really good just to instantly banish any card that's sent to the graveyard this card's really 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 helpful in the deck we then play three copies of eradicator epidemic eradicator epidemic is ridiculously good because you contribute a copy of ophion to be able to call spells or traps and you look at your opponent's hand and every card that they have on their field and then every card that they draw for the next three turns. And if you call spells, they have to send every spell to the graveyard. If you call traps, they have to send every trap to the graveyard. This card is actually insane and broken. And I love playing it in dark decks like this that just totally shut down the opponent. Because if you can stop them from special summoning with Ophion, and then you have this to be able to stop them from spells and traps, spells or traps, whichever one they lean heavier towards. If they're playing Eldridge, then you're going to hit the traps. If you're playing against something like like Drytrons, you're going to hit the spells. It just depends on what you need. This card has got you. I mean, Virtual World, you're going to call spells, in my opinion. With the Ophion, it's going to prevent them from climbing higher in Virtual World. I mean, there's just so many decks that this deck card just totally, like, hits them the wrong way and they can't play with Ophion and Eradicator like they just can't play which is cool we then play three copies of there can only be one which is basically the final nail in it which is really cool because each player can only control one monster of each type which a lot of decks play one type like there's just a lot of decks right now that are running around they're just playing one type of card that they can't out the copy of uh there can only be one because they're not playing a lot of back row removal right now. So this card is really just a really good stun card that each player can only control one monster of each type. And if they're, if you're uh, a player controls more than two monsters of the same type, they must send cards to the graveyard until they only control one type. This card is ridiculously good in this deck and it will always probably be good in this deck because all of your evil sworn monsters are different types from Kirkion being a spellcaster to caster being a warrior, your copy of Mandragora being a plant and your copy of Thunderbird being a thunder monster of course and then heliotrope being a copy of a rock monster you have so many different types in the deck that make this card just ridiculously good so that's it for the traps and the main deck guys let's get into the extra deck so for the extra deck, we're going to be playing two copies of Evil Sworn Ophion. You really just need two, because if you have to summon a third one, you're, what are you doing? Like, there's something wrong. Something has gone terribly wrong, and you're just, there, you shouldn't have had to summon three of this card. What this card does is, while you have this card, while it has any materials on it, level five or higher monsters cannot be special summoned. And then once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to add an infestation spell or trap from your deck to your hand, which can be your infestation pandemic or your infestation infection. Either one of those two cards can be added from your deck to your hand off your copy of Ophion. We did play a single copy of Bahamut, which is really good because once per turn you can detach a material from this card and target a face of monster opponent controls, discard an evil sworn monster from your hand, and if you do, you get to take control of the opponent's monster, which is 
pretty good just to be able to take a monster from your opponent. One copy, and it doesn't, like, it takes it permanently. Like, they don't get it back until it goes to the graveyard, which is pretty good. One copy of Exiton Knight. Exiton Knight just blows board, which is super helpful for the deck. Uh, one copy of Double A Zeus. Double A Zeus is ridiculous in this deck because you can make it on top of a monster, an Xyz monster, and then just board wipe or send everything to the graveyard, which is really cool because if an Xyz monster battles, you make this on top of it. And then once you do, you can quick effect detach two materials from this card and then send all cards from the field to the graveyard. And then once we turn it, another card you control is destroyed by battle or by an opponent's card effect you can attach material from your hand deck or extra deck to this card as material which is pretty good just to be able to attach anything to this we play a single copy of raider's knight because raider's knight is really good to help us go into the arc rebellion and you play everything in the deck is dark except ash blossom so this card is really easy just to make uh, you play the same copy of Arc Rebellion because you can make it on top of Raider's Knight and it gets really big. It's kind of like if I banish a copy of Double or Nothing, I can make this instead, which is super helpful and has the ability this card can, can be cannot be destroyed by card effects either. And then you can detach from two of this card and it gains attack total to the, all the monsters on the field. And then if this card is a dark material under it, you negate the effects of all their face-up cards or, or monsters on the field. And after this uh, effect resolves, you cannot attack with monsters other than this card for the rest of the turn, but you're probably going to OTK your opponent if you resolve all that. We then play a single copy of Utopia Double and a single copy of Utopia, which is basically a 10,000 bead stick where you summon Utopia and then Utopia Double, you detach a material from it, you add double or nothing from deck to hand, you overlay Utopia on top of to uh, top of it, comes out at 5,000, swing at your opponent, negate the uh, attack with Utopia, drop double or nothing, swing again for 10,000 and OTK your opponent for game if they have anything on the field that is less than 2,000. I play a single copy of Time Thief Redoer. Redoer is just pretty good because it's a basically a level... Um, it's basically a rank four that's dark that can take cards off from your opponent. So it's a pretty good one of, in my opinion, just to play in the deck um, because it can help out the deck quite a lot. I play a single copy of Tornado Dragon just to be able to pop spells and traps. Abyss Dweller to be able to lock my opponent's graveyard down. Number 60 because it can double the attack of a monster, especially summon something from graveyard or be able to draw two and discard one. It just helps out the deck a lot. One copy of Evil Sworn Nightmare because basically it can be Book of Moon by detaching a material from it. You can usually end with a board with an Evil Evil Sworn Ophion and a Nightmare in defense mode, and your opponent really can't do much because if they summon something that's level 5 or higher, then they can't special summon anything that's level 5 or higher, and then this card's Book of Mooning everything, and then you have There Can Be Only One that's basically protecting all your cards on the field because they can't special summon anything else, and then you have also Eradicator that if things go sideways, you can tribute this and then call spells or traps. If they're playing something like Pendulum, you call spells or traps when they lay their scales down, and you win instantaneously. And then we play a single copy of Steel Sworn Origins. I play a single copy of this card. You really don't make it that much, but sometimes you do, and basically what it does is, is while it's in the extra monster zone, if a monster would be special summoned uh from the extra deck to a monster zone it has to be special summoned to this card's monster zone but since your copy or since the um revision of the master rule where they can special summon exes synchros fusions and other cards of the such in other zones this card is just not to me as good and you just don't need it and if this card is summoned to a zone uh this card points to while this card isn't um well this card points to a monster neither player can target it with monster effects and also cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects in the one per turn when a monster on the field is destroyed by battle or by card effect you can special summon one level four lower elsewhere monster from your deck to defense position uh up to the number of monsters destroyed which is okay but at the same time this card is kind of a more of a swarm card where the deck is more of a like control based deck so this card is just kind of okay so that's it for the deck guys don't forget to like comment subscribe definitely tell me what you think of this deck down in the comments down below because it is bonkers this deck is crazy and is just super fun to play um i'm really excited to bring this deck into maybe some live duels because it is fun this deck is super fun especially if you're playing against any sort of deck that special summons level five or higher this deck is ridiculous so anyways guys this is dark room duels don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell notification comment bar notification squad and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys